Hello, welcome to Prejame Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 44 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll learn about after triggers, after update triggers specifically. In part 42 of this video series, we have spoken about after insert and after delete triggers. Again, in part 42, we have spoken about you know the three types of triggers that are available in SQL Server, DML, DDL, and logon triggers. DML triggers are fired automatically in response to DML events, and examples of DML events include insert, update, and delete statements. DML triggers can again be classified into two types, after triggers and instead of triggers. After triggers you know, are also called as for triggers. And in part 42, we have spoken about after insert and after delete triggers. And we know that after triggers fires after the triggering action. The insert, update, and delete statements causes an after trigger to fire after the respective statement's complete execution. On the other hand, instead of triggers, as the name says, fires instead of the triggering action. Instead of the insert, update, and delete statements, the instead of trigger gets fired. Okay, and we have seen in part 42 of this video series, you know, there are two special tables that triggers make use of, inserted and deleted tables. Inserted tables will hold the new data that you have inserted into that table, and deleted table will hold the data that you have actually deleted. Now, let us see what actually happens when we update a row, and if there is an update trigger, you know, what does these inserted and deleted tables contain? So let's first quickly create an update trigger on TBL employee table. So we have got this TBL employee table, which has got ID name, salary, gender, and department ID columns. Now let's go ahead and create an update trigger on this table, and then update a row and see what these inserted and deleted tables look like. So let's get into SQL Server Management Studio. And we have this tables, you know, TBL employee. And let's write an update trigger for this. And again, the syntax for the update trigger is pretty much simple. I mean, similar to insert and delete trigger, except that instead of for insert or for delete, you use for update. So create trigger trigger name and then give a meaningful name to the trigger. Usually triggers have, will have a TR prefix or TR underscore the table on which we are creating this trigger in this case TBL employee and for what action and we are creating this for an update action so for update on TBL employee for update as begin and end. Okay so here let's simply say select star from you know, the two special tables that triggers make use of, deleted, and the other one is inserted. So select star from inserted table. And let's look at what actually happens. So create this trigger. Command completed successfully. If we refresh the triggers folder, we should see the trigger that we have just created. All right, now let's go ahead and update the employee table. So if you look at the employee table, we have got um, an employee with ID 8, who is Jane here at the moment. Jane, his salary is 1800, and Jane is a female. But what we are doing here in the update statement is basically we are changing his name from Jane to James, and his salary from 1800 to 2000, and gender from female to male. Okay, so let's execute this and see what actually happens. And keep in mind, we have created, you know, an after update trigger. So obviously immediately after the execution of this update statement on this TBL employees table, this trigger gets fired automatically. Okay, And we know that triggers are actually special kinds of stored procedures that execute automatically in response to the DML events because these are DML triggers. So let's execute this update statement and see what happens. So press F5. Look at this. The, this is the you know select star from deleted so deleted tables can deleted table contains this data and inserted table contains this data so if you look at it id we haven't changed the id because that's the primary key so it stays as it is and then we have changed the name from jane to james and similarly salary from 1800 to 2000 female to male and department ID we haven't changed, so it's the same. So from this, you should have got an idea that deleted table will contain the data that the table has before the update action. And inserted table will contain the data, I mean, actually the new data after the update. 
okay so delete I mean after update trigger actually makes use of both inserted and deleted tables and inserted tables contain the new data deleted table contains the old data before the update action all right now with this in mind let's let's you know quickly write a trigger that can audit you know employee information when we update a specific employee data okay now if you look at what we are trying to achieve let's say for example yesterday when we have spoken about um, you know after insert and after delete triggers we have audited these things you know for example when we add a new employee we said new employee with ID is equal to 9 is added at so and so date and time similarly if an employee is deleted then we have audited that as well similarly when we update an employee's details we want to capture what information is updated okay for example if you look at this employee with ID is equal to 2 changed name from Mike to Mikey and salary from 3400 to 3500 so these two fields are changed okay if there is only one field change then we only want to capture that one field okay so how many ever are the fields changed we want to capture all those fields and then log that in this another table called TBL employee audit table okay so let us see how to do that and obviously you know we can make use of after update trigger for that okay so we have this TBL employee and TBL employee audit table so we want to insert you know audit information into this TBL employee audit table and if you look at the TBL employee audit table it has got one column of type I mean two columns basically one is the primary key and the other one is Enver care audit data okay so obviously we will have to build the string and then insert it into this table okay so if you look at the way inserted and deleted tables are storing the old and new data it should be pretty straightforward to achieve you know what we will basically do is retrieve the data from inserted table compare that with the data in the deleted table and if there are changes build that string and then insert that string into TBL employee audit table it's as simple as that so obviously if you look at the employee table it has got name salary gender and department ID columns so we need variables to hold the old and new value so first of all we need to create the trigger so let's create the trigger I have this written already so that we don't waste time typing it so create trigger trigger name since we already have a trigger with this name we will call I mean we'll say alter instead of create okay on TBL employee for update as begin so this is all the regular stuff and look at this we are creating some variables basically here and the reason why we are creating these variables are to hold the old data and the new data for example ID will not change that's a primary key so I just have one variable to hold that ID of type integer but then name salary gender and department ID can change so I am having variables of that data type old name new name old salary new salary old gender new gender old department ID new department ID and then obviously you know we need to build a string like this employee with ID is equal to two change the name from whatever so we need to build a string like this and to do that we need a variable of type and where care so I'm creating another variable called audit string of length thousand okay and then I am using here a temporary table and the reason for that is let's say for example I will actually practically explain that reason in a bit okay so all we are doing here is so this is a trigger and we know that a trigger can access inserted and deleted table so what we are doing here after after declaring all the variables that we need we are saying okay select all the rows from the inserted table so when will a row get into an inserted table whenever somebody updates a specific row the new data will be in the inserted table so what we are telling here is whatever row that is there in inserted table take it in take that into the temp table okay select star into hash temp table from inserted okay so put that row into the temporary table and then I'm using a loop here and the reason why I'm doing this is because somebody can issue an update statement like this update TBL employee set name is equal to whatever salary is equal to whatever 
and then where id in maybe 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 they can give any number of ids they want so if you are, if they are updating so many records in a single shot then we want to loop through each record because we want to update each employee so that's why i'm putting this in this temporary table and then looping each row within that temporary table okay so here we are checking okay select id from hash temporary table so we are getting the id I mean, if there is an ID column, I mean, if there are rows, select the ID column. If there are no rows, obviously, this will not return anything. And this exists function will return false. If it returns false, obviously, we'll get out of the loop. So this is basically a Boolean condition to check if there are rows in the temporary table. And then what we are doing here, we are initially, you know, setting the audit string to an empty string. And then from the temporary table, if there are rows, you know, this condition will tell if there are rows in the temporary table. So if there are rows, it could be one, it could be many. Okay. So if there are many rows, we still only want the first row. That's why we are using top one. So select top one, you know, what we are saying is select the ID into ID variable. Since this is an inserted table, we are copying into hash temp table. So hash temp table contains the new data. So I'm copying the name, new name to name, I mean name to new name, gender to new gender variable, similarly salary and department ID from the temp table. And then what we are doing, we are taking this ID and then going to the deleted table because deleted table contains the old data. So we are using the old variables, old name, old salary, old gender, populating them. Okay, so it's pretty simple. I mean, these are these two lines are you know they look big, but they are pretty simple to understand. All you are doing is selecting the first row from inserted table, taking that ID, and then comparing that with the ID in the deleted table. Because if there are multiple rows, we want to pick up the right ID. So and then we are populating those old variables. Next step, as you might have guessed, what we will do, we will compare the old and new names old and new gender okay but before that we are setting the audit string okay so how do we want the output we want to say employee with id is equal to 2 changed so we want to first build a string and to do that we are using we are setting the audit string to employee with id is equal to whatever is the id that we have here and id data type is integer so we need to cast that so id is integer we need to cast that to anywhere char so we are casting that and then concatenating with this string and then obviously to that we are concatenating this changed word and then now starts the comparison so from here this is again a very simple code you know it looks big but then it's just a copy paste of the code so here we are saying okay if old name is not equal to new name it means it has changed so we are concatenating the audit string so to this audit string add obviously the old name is not equal to new name so employee with id is equal to one or two whatever changed name from the old name concatenate that to two and new name because those variables contain old and new name respectively and along the same lines we are comparing genders salary old department to new department and then we are building these strings dynamically there if there is no change then it wouldn't get into this if block and then concatenate that so I mean this procedure looks pretty big but then it's pretty simple it's it's mostly it's a copy paste these lines you're declaring if you look at this these lines you're declaring variables here you're copying the rows from inserted table into hash temp table and the reason why we are doing that is because if we have multiple rails then we want to audit each employees record and then we are using a while loop to check there are rows in temporary table or not and then here you are taking the first row because you're using top one keyword if there are multiple rows you get the first row from the inserted table and then along the same lines you're also getting other columns into those variables and then using that ID retrieving the row from deleted table and then populating the old variables and then you're building the audit string here and finally what you need to do you need to insert that audit string 
into TBL employee audit table. And if you remember, TBL employee audit table has got only two columns, ID and audit data columns. ID is an identity column whose seed is one, increment is one. So obviously when you insert a new row, ID value will be automatically calculated. You only have to supply the value for audit data column. So that's the reason why we are only supplying audit string into this TBL employee audit table. And then what you need to do, this is very important, delete from from the temporary table, delete the record that you have just audited. Otherwise, this loop will become an infinite loop. Okay. That's all. So let's alter this trigger and see if it works as expected. Press F5, command complete successfully. So the trigger is created. Now let's kind of try to update. But before that, let's select the data. So let's say we want to change maybe Todd to Todd name to TODS and look at this Todd's record is this one ID is equal to four and salary from four thousand eight hundred to let's give him two thousand and gender from male to let's say female. We can also change department ID if we want to, but I'm not gonna change that. And we can say where ID is equal to four. So when we update this, press F5, all right, it says one row affected. Now let's select data from TBL employee table, actually employee audit and employee table. And if you look at the audit data, you should see employee with ID is equal to four, changed name from Todd to Todd's, gender from male to female, salary from 4,800 to 2,000. All right, so it's a simple example. I mean, it looks big, but then it's, most of it is a copy paste. So the after trigger for update even makes use of both inserted and deleted tables. And obviously the inserted table contains the updated data and the deleted table contains the old data. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.